Alrighty then, in today's uh, video, uh, what I'm doing is I'm prepping a detachable balance staff for a Waltham Vanguard movement. These little detachable balance staffs are, are great. Um, you require the hub to be attached to the uh, to the balance itself, and then you you stake this balance staff on onto the hub. So here I'm just making sure that the uh, roller table side of the uh, balance staff is the right size. I had a problem with the one I ordered previously and then I worked with Dave's watch parts. So Dave's watch parts, Dave's a great guy and he provided me with another balance staff after um, I sent him the exact measurements. Um, and if you're going to order something from Dave like this, make sure you send exact me measurements of the uh, staff, all the diameters and the length, so, and also the pivot size if you need to. So. So here I'm just uh, making sure that this uh, the, the uh, roller table fit on and it did. It fit quite well, so there was no issue there. I'm having a look, a, ga a gander at it. I'm having a gander at it. Um, also, I've got to uh, figure out, okay, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? So I got myself a stake, and so this is a reversing uh, staking set, so I'm able to use the stake as a stump. So it's the old stake and stump. I think <laughs> there used to be a... A, a restaurant when I was a kid. It was called the Steak and Stump. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm uh, centering the steak in the uh, staking set here. Um, I've got the centering stake in there. That's what that is. And then I'm tightening in the back uh, just to make sure that that's uh, completely lined up. There's the uh, device that you use to tighten it up. Um, and it, there's a it's it's a mechanism on the inside that's cammed. And the cam actually turns and tightens the uh, table on the top so it doesn't move. And that's absolutely centered. So if you're going to stake something on, you want it to be absolutely centered and flat. If you don't uh, stake it on properly, like flat, you could end up with the balance being uh, slightly skewed to one direction. So there's the uh, hub that you can see in the middle, middle of the balance. Uh, and that hub is actually attached to the balance permanently. Um, I knocked that out by accident because I didn't know that this had a, a hub on it. I just thought it was a colored balance staff, but it wasn't. So. So I position it this way and I, and I leave enough um, room. Basically, I make sure that the diameter of the stake on the bottom is the uh, right diameter to, uh, to allow that the, uh, the actual hub to rest against the edges of the, of the uh, stake. That way I'm not punching, this, punching it and putting any pressure at all on the rims or the arms of the balance. So here you can see I've got a stake that's slightly smaller in diameter on the end and that'll, that ensures that when I punch the staff down in through this uh, detachable hub that the um, that I'm not pounding on that detachable hub at all I'm just um, I'm only touching the uh, the uh, staff itself so I'm fitting it in here nice and loosely and uh, it shouldn't take much uh, effort to get this in if it was fitted right and I made sure that the uh, th that this, as you can see, the stake fits perfectly um, onto that little edge of the balance staff, so it's ready to uh, be be uh, knocked in right now. And what I want to do is make sure that that edge that that stake is is resting on is is basically parallel with the uh, the hub, the top of the hub. Um, it's kind of conic on the inside, the hub, so the stake is. Uh, the balance staff is also conic and the two of them fit together so so there we go I've put it in there I've pounded it in um, and because I'm narrating you don't hear the sound of the hammer I could take a hammer and smash it on a desk or something there that's my simulated uh, stake hammering right there and I'm gonna do it again here we go there that's simulated stake hammering so, so I'm hammering that in so now that's friction fit in that hub um, and these were made so people could bring their watches back and get them, get the uh, the staff easily replaced. And uh, it was kind of convenient when you think about it. It's a lot easier to, to to work on. And the material that's the steel that's being used for this hub is much stronger than the balance uh, material itself. Um, so it's not going or or the material used for the uh, the the uh, balance staff. So it's not going to move at all. So so it was well done. So now I've done that job and it's on the next. In this job here, what I want to do is make sure I've got the um, the impulse jewel on the right side of this balance. As you can see, there's a little red mark on the arm of the balance. That I put that red mark on there to uh, to 
to annotate or to note where the um, where the stud was on the hairspring. So if I line the stud up, as you can see right now, it's kind of on that side, but I'm just sort of uh, just sort of sort of uh, trial fitting it here, and, uh, and I've got the uh, the roller table uh, ready to line up too. So I I put that on that side. I say okay, that's where my uh, balance cock needs to be on this side. Rotate that around because I had it on the wrong side, and that means that if, if this is uh, perfectly lined up where the uh, stud of the balance uh, of the hairspring goes into the, uh, the holder on the balance cock, then, then the impulse jewel then needs to be on the front part of that, you know, facing where the pallet fork would be. So, and that's kind of upside down right now, the configuration. So that would be on the bottom of that. Um, so all I need to do is make sure that, that I remember that that impulse jewel is on the left side of what you're looking at right now, the balance staff right now. But uh, but of course, installed the other way. So what I'm going to do is flip this thing around, right? So flip that the balance staff around to the position it would be within the watch as I install it, and then um, and then I've got the roller table on there, and that roller table would just go right on the top there, as you can see. So I'm just going to place that on top. And that's where it would be and of course everything goes ping that just flew off my tweezers and onto the table um so i haven't lost a lot of things lately but uh i did lose a screw today which kind of peeves me off and i got the very hungry carpet down below so but i haven't lost a screw in a long time i just was concentrating on something else i think so so there we go so that's kind of where i want to stake that on so it's not too difficult to stake that on but when you select your stake you just have to make sure that you're you bear in mind where that impulse jewel is so that you, your stake doesn't smash the jewel going around, right? Then you'd have to shellac the jewel back on, which is no fun. It's do very doable. I've made videos on that, but, but, but really not needed if you do it properly. So, so there we go. So now I'm ready to actually install the, um, the roller table now. So the first thing I do again, I've got the, I think it's called the inverto set here. So, I got a couple of staking sets, and this is kind of the one I use all the time. Um, and I know that this is the uh, right size um, because it's the same. I believe I think it's the same size I use to uh, to put on the put the stake in place in the first place, right? So, so there's the um, there it is. There all set up, and it's generally lined up uh, centered. So that that's sitting on the on the on the uh, the top of the stake and again the pressure will be on that on that uh, hub that's that's a uh, part of the uh, Waltham balance staff. The Vanguard uh, series of uh, of movements is very high end. It's a 23 joule movement, pretty exceptional movement. So so right now I'm looking for a stake that uh, fits over that uh, that that part where the uh, the part of the balance staff or the uh, where the ba where the uh, roller table goes. So I reluctantly didn't turn off my camera at this point in time, so I'll just ramble along and tell you a story about a man named Jed. So there we go. So now I'm just making sure that this goes all the way down the stake. So that's pretty good. That fits nicely. Um, as you can see, I got a wound on my finger. I should have taken the day off at work. Big wound on my finger there. So so that fits perfectly over over the top, and I'm just eyeballing it again just to make sure that that fits. So there's no issue with that snug snugly going over that uh, part of the balance staff because I'm going to be putting that roller table down and that's so critical to get that roller table in exactly the right place so I want the roller table then to be 90 degrees to the balance to one of the balance arms right kind of uh, going out towards me where I marked the edge with a marker as you, you saw earlier so I put a little mark on there so I knew where it would need to be now I'm going to put that uh, <coughs> roller table down, and <coughs> and I really just want to make sure that that uh, impulse jewel is at 90 degrees, because um, it would have been at 90 degrees before with the uh, hairspring on there, properly installed roller, um, and <coughs> I didn't mark it previously, but a properly installed roller is at 90 degrees to those arms, so there I've got it at 90 degrees. Now I'm just taking it off and. I'll play with that a little bit and make sure that that's, uh, you know, I'll tap it a little bit here and there and make sure it's the right right position. So, 
a little later on I'm going to look down and, and through the top of this to make sure it's right as well. So here you can see a pretty cool top view. So I'm actually looking through the stop, the top of the staking set, uh, the anvil basically, uh, and looking down at the roller table sitting on the uh, on the balance and trying to make sure that that is at 90 degrees. It looks like it needs to be. It's pretty tough to see, but if you just look down and you eyeball it, it looks like it needs to be tapped to the left just a bit. Um, I recall playing with it a bit when I was making this bit video and trying to make sure it was completely aligned. Um, and it's just very meticulous work when you're doing this, but it makes a big difference um, in the beat error. So if you have this, um, if you have the roller, the roller table wrong, which means the impulse tool will be slightly off from 90, then the hairspring, when you put that hairspring on, um, then that the impulse jewel won't be sitting in the center of the uh, banking pins uh, when you assemble it all. So, and you'll get uh, you'll get a bead error. So, um, <clears throat> it's actually not in the center; it's slightly over from center. But we all say it's in the center for the bead error. So, this is what all I was doing here was making sure that was aligned before I staked it on. And here I've got the staking set all ready, so I've got it uh, ready to pound down. I could simulate the staking again. There's my hammer. So now we're going to get ready to pound that down. Let me stimulate this to see if I can. Here we go. I'm going to simulate the pounding of the roller table down. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Oh my god. That actually went down really nicely, which means that the, uh, the degree of taper on that uh, bounce staff was absolutely perfect. I think it's uh, supposed to be like a th three degrees of taper on the balance staff to be impeccable. So, so that job is done, um, done and dusted. That's 90 degrees. Um, now I've got to. Uh, there's another another uh, roll, the safety roller that goes on now. So, and the safety roller, I think it jumps off on me, but the safety roller goes on the top, and there's a little half moon on the safety roller that's got to line up with the impulse jewel. So. So I've taken the safety roller right now and I'm just going to place it on there and try to line that up properly. Alright, the uh, safety roller, just placing it on top of the uh, balance staff here. Be, got to also be very careful that you don't uh, play with those pivots as you go down through this. Just avoid touching the pivots altogether because um, later on uh, I, I need to actually use my J-Cot tool to trim some material off the pivots. So. But just be very careful that you uh, stay away from those pivots because those can uh, get damaged quite easily. So here I've got the, uh, I'm just playing with that half moon again to make sure that that half moon is exactly over the uh, impulse jewel. In this case here, the impulse jewel, uh, the flat part is facing outward towards the rim of the balance um, for the impulse jewel and the rounded part is facing towards the balance staff. In this case, as you can see from the top, it looks like it's good. I'm trying to nudge it with my with my uh, tweezers. Um, it looks good. Uh, it looks like there's some marring on the side there, but that's actually just a little bit of dirt on the on that uh, safety roller. So I did line it up properly, um, and it looked good. I'm double, triple checking it, and it's so important to get this thing lined up. So if you get there's a dart that's part of the pallet fork. And if you get that uh, roller table, the safety roller on wrong, and it's not sort of lined exactly up with that impulse jewel, then the dart will prevent the, uh, the impulse jewel from going into the mouth of the uh, pallet fork. And then nothing works. So there, I've just pushed it on or staked it on. Um, I think I've, I've just placed it on to make sure it's perfect before I do any serious staking. As, uh, and the stake I use is the same one I think I used to uh, put on the... Uh, the uh, balance staff previously, so it just needs to fit over this, and then you, uh, and then it'll fit over the same staff uh, that you were you were using before. So, so you can use reuse these stakes, even the one that was upside down. I've already fitted it perfectly, so I can reuse that for part of the job as well. They tell you to go get a stump for this, but you don't need to if you've got an inverto uh, staking set. You can just use the uh, stakes that you have in the staking set, and it works perfectly good. So here I'm tapping it in. No simulation for you. I'm sorry, but uh, you can see I'm watching. My, I'm wearing my St. Martin uh, watch. It was a quick watch check there. Um, anyway, that's staked down. I think it's staked down. If I was a smart guy, I'd just forward the video and I'd be accurate, right? <laughs> I 
this is a, one of the few times of actually just narrating rather than just talking while I'm doing the work. But this work was such uh, precision work. It took me uh, a long time to get this done right. Putting on the uh, the parts of the balance was not the hard part. It was actually finalizing the whole thing. So, so here we go. It's being staked on now. And you can see there's an, uh, enough of the balance showing out again. So that's ready. So that part is, uh, is now good to go. So now all I have to do is uh, install the hairspring and we're good as gold. Jerry, we're good as gold. All right, so now installing the hairspring is uh, not too bad. Again, I got to line that hairspring with the red mark on the arm of the uh, balance. And, and that's where it was before. So I'm ensuring that it's all put together the same way it was put on before. So I minimize my chance of getting a bead error problem on the watch. And if you've got a bead error issue on the watch, then it's just harder to get good timing of the watch in various positions. Even if it's got a super strong amplitude, it's still uh, it's still going to show different uh, different problems in different positions. So, uh, poising the balance is also something you can do to prevent uh, bead errors issues on this. Um, this watch was uh, pretty high end and working. Oh, it was working. I can't remember whether it was actually working or whether I. I think that the the uh, balance uh, staff. Oh, I remember the pivot on this balance staff. The previous balance staff was bent, like considerably bent. Um, I thought I might be able to bend it back, but but I, it wasn't possible. So I had to get another balance staff for it because you can probably bend it back once, but that's it, folks. You try again and, and uh, it'll crack. It'll be uh, it'll uh, it'll won't work. So I decided I'd get another uh, a pivot to do a uh, or sorry another uh, balance staff so they have a perfect uh, OEM level pivot on there. So uh, it deserves it. It's a high high grade watch. So. So here I'm just trying to make sure that the hairspring is, is uh, you know, the stud for the hairspring is lined up with the, um, with the, with the arm and the little red mark I have there. Um, so the collet is uh, just sitting there. So I put a little pressure on that, on that uh, hairspring, uh, and then I can also rotate it with a screwdriver. So just to make sure it's down a bit. So I'm trying to avoid touching the coils here. I'm bouncing the. Uh, I'm bouncing the stud, but that's probably not a good idea either. So all I really need to do is take a screwdriver, a very small screwdriver, and then put it into the uh, crack there of the collet, and then grab the uh, the whole uh, mo movement and move it, or grab the balance, uh, the complete balance, and then move the balance instead of trying to move the screwdriver, right? So, and that'll get it fairly well aligned. So I just played with it there until I got it right on the top. And then I was ready to uh, stake that on. And again, I can use the exact same stake again to put this on, as long as it covers that uh, covers the majority of the the uh, the collet for the hairspring. Because I don't want to put stress on the collet. I don't want to widen it. I don't want the gap to widen. I just want to push straight down. A lot of times you can just use your finger to push down using pressure. In this case, I tapped it ever so slightly, uh, tapped it down into position uh, ever so slightly. So. Uh, later on in this uh, in this movie, I actually have to remove the hairspring again because uh, I have to do work on the on the pivots uh, as I should have test fit fit it first. So that's a lesson I'm, I learned and relearned. I think a few times is that <clears throat> first thing you should do when you get the balance staff is uh, put the balance staff into the into the uh, watch. You can cut a little round circular piece of paper and pretend that's the balance. And then spin that in the watch to see if that balance is right is the right size for the uh, for the movement. Like, see if the balance actually f the pivots fit into the jewels, and everything is working well before you even put the balance uh, s the whole balance together. Right, the balance with the uh, roller table and all the rest of it. So, I kind of went for it. Should probably should have done what I just said I'd, and and, re and fit it properly without the balance on even to see if it was uh, if there was an issue turns out that the uh, upper pivot, I needed to shave some material off of the upper pivot. I also needed to shave the diameter down a bit on the upper pivot and the lower pivot um, <clears throat> as the, 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 the pivots were not the exact size for the jewels that were in this particular watch. And over time, a 100 year old watch, um, probably some of the jewels had been replaced and it's not the OEM jewels that are in there. It's just jewels that have 
that were were there they were cracked replaced by a watchmaker and then so the perfectly sized jewel that came with the watch from before wouldn't be the right size so it might go from a a 10 to a 9 or, or from a 9 to a to a 10 and then you you need to fit it properly so there's a lot of custom fitting when you're when you're doing this kind of work it's not like uh, you buy your your Honda Accord and all of a sudden everything kind of works and fits so so I did that and got that on nicely I realized after that when I put it into the watch um, I installed it on the balance cock and then I uh, installed that in the watch and realized that the uh, the pivots needed to be uh, the diameter of the pivots need to be reduced a bit and the upper pivot uh, needed to be a little less long because it was kind of bottoming out or topping out on the uh, upper jewel uh, jewel cap so <laughs> even though I'm showing you my nice work here I end up uh, jumping onto the JCOT tool in a few seconds so so I did remove the the hairspring from it again I didn't bother putting that in the video it's not really relevant so so there I am uh, there's my messy messy desk with a nice little switch Swiss Rolex or a Swiss Omega pocket watch there on the desk. So I've got my uh, glasses and I'm uh, basically burnishing the pivot on this and I believe I'm working on the upper pivot there um, and I'm removing material from it uh, just sizing it down because um, when it was installed uh, it just wasn't run, running smooth <clears throat> and all you really need to do is put it in without the hairspring on which I did um, and then take a puffer and blow some air on it and you can see it if it's spinning spinning freely when you puff it with air it's going to work really well with the hairspring on so so here I'm just uh, taking a bit of material off now caution you can't add material after the fact so watch how much material you take off um, little lessons I've learned in the past uh, you can't make a balance staff longer so so there I did the work it's done um, and then I completed the watch and it's working uh, impeccably. The final product is working really well here. Um, I'm getting an amplitude of about uh, 400 uh, degrees, which is or a swing of about 400 degrees, which is incredible um, on a watch this, this age. So very, very pleased. So thanks for watching my video and I'll catch you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.